So now we have another mountain of sorts to climb. This is Zelfatal, where most of the Ixal, okay, the Toad, okay, calm the hell down, actually live. Because some crap, do the elementals, green, green wrath, get kicked out of the Twelve Woods, something like that. Something, I'm not the lore person. But needless to say, while I don't have a lot to talk about the enduring this place a little bit, I'm actually a bit fond of this dungeon. I can't really put it on my finger on why, but I think it's just... I like the fact that it's outdoors, which is something you really don't see. Like, there's always caves or caverns or breaking into holy vaults or old haunted lighthouses or something. And here we have just something a bit different. We get rocks tumbling on us, although I don't know if this is uh, just as a result of the weather up here, because it's kind of it's kind of a bit inhospitable up here. That's why only the Ixel live up here, because they had nowhere else to go, kicked out of the Twelve's lid, blah blah blah. So I don't know if it's just a result of just the harsh winds or the weather around here, or it's because the Ixel see we're coming and just start chucking giant rocks at us. I don't know. Does anyone actually know, or am I just talking completely up my butt again? Probably the latter, but humor me for a moment. Just a moment. Just a moment. So surprisingly, they got some like weird creatures in. Like, what the hell do they have the elves doing up here? Like, what the shit? Like, this cobra? Like, well, I guess cobras can technically live pretty much anywhere. But, yeah, I, I, do, I don't know how they got these sea creatures up here. Did they, like, steal them from the Sahagin or something with that? Because one of the, the, the non-shitty Sahagin actually have them, and one of them actually clips the whippings between their toes to actually make them as fast as chocobos on land. It compromises their ability to swim swiftly a bit, but like I said, it does give the, the, the added benefit is, is they're, they're as fast on land as chocobo as a result of it, but if you're not traveling on land, like no other Sahagan has freaking use for those damn things, because, you know, actual Sahagan live under the water. So, yeah, did they just, like, steal them or something? I mean, that kind of sounds like something the Excel would do, but uh, that's a pretty far way to go to go get one of those damn things. But, again, I may be completely talking out my butt. Maybe it's possible they live somewhere else, and they had the same idea. I don't know. I really don't know. So, the only real disappointment is this first section of the dungeon. Yeah, we're not actually fighting Ixel. I'm just gonna assume this is this natural fauna that lives up here in the Harsh Mountains, but... It's just weird to me. So, as much as the Ixel are a bunch of bastards, I kinda gotta hand it to them. Now, not that the Beast Tribes in and of themselves are dumb, because, like, you have the Kobolds who have their caverns and even a mini Aetherite network down there to which to travel. They're, they're, they're incredibly good miners. They mine for ore and everything. But for all you're going to see of what the Ixel have actually built here, um, I got to hand it to them. They're pretty damn good at architecture. I, 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 I honestly have to, hand, I, I have to give credit where credit is due, guys. Uh, Felinus Interruptus, you guys. But she's adorable, and we love her. So, what do I want to talk about this episode? What do I want to talk about? Struggling to think without spoiling anything. But I guess we can talk about a little bit about Alize a little bit. Now, for those who haven't watched my older videos, not that I blame you because they're they're f absolutely fucking horrible. Not gonna hold it against you at all. But the last time we officially saw her in the main story was way, way, way back in the beginning of Realm Reborn under the Remembrance Ceremonies, where the actual three main city states storylines actually come together and it ever starts to become one single cohesive plot line. She's a little bit pissed that they're all talking about like bolstering their forces even though it's supposed to be a remembering ceremony for those who fucking died in the calamity her grandfather included so she just completely fucking storms off and Alphino's smug little attitude doesn't help her in the slightest there and she just just up and disappears well she does obviously reappear in the binding Bahoyla Bahamut storyline 
which I have gone into much detail of explaining her character, even though I have changed my mind about a few things and reanalyzed a few things. But a lot of it involves her learning to let go of the past and learning to move on. And in the process, she kind of discovers that she is more than what she has let herself become. And as a result, strives to strike out on her own again, a bit more at peace with the relationship with her brother. A bit. Not entirely, but a bit. And to find still that she needs to find her own way in the world. And, she, you know, she... She's just gonna, she's just gonna do it her way. That's that's how she always is, and she hasn't made re made a reappearance in the, the main story until now. Well, besides the two small little cameo appearances we've seen of her spying on the warriors of darkness. Now, at the time, until this patch actually came out. Well, actually, was it then or no? It was slightly before this patch came out when the one of the, the anniversary tales came out. Uh, it was actually unknown who she was spying on, because there's both Oriange, the Warriors of Darkness, and Elidibus. That's three, not two, I don't know how to count. And it's it's unclear who she is spying on, just that just that she is watching. So it was a matter of, is she spying on the Warriors of Darkness? Is she spying on Elidibus? Is she wondering what the fuck Oriange is up to? Because she's actually pretty close with him. And we didn't know. Well, obviously we knew now that she was most definitely spying on the Warriors of Darkness. But what actually led her to that, well, we don't know that just yet. Just that she was following them. And Thancred didn't really have any idea at first. Master Espionage, you're not Thancred. But, um, as she is my favorite character, for, for many, many, many reasons. Obviously, I'm going to be a bit actually biased in her favor, so you'll please forgive me for doting on her and such. So, in the past, I have actually gone through, in detail, like data mine, some of the dialogue from the other languages. I have not yet done that with a bunch of other patches, mostly out of laziness, because there are a few differences between dialogues in various languages. For the most part, the general, the general idea is much the same. Like, like it's there, there is no quote unquote true version or whatever. But there are occasionally some in details in English that they either add where they're not necessary or entirely leave out, which kind of pisses me off a bit, to be perfectly honest sometimes those details are very important. And this is kind of one of those where I absolutely abhor what they did with the English localization in this patch, especially when it comes to in regards to her. Now, it's actually in one of the other languages that it's heavily implied that Elfino is the one who actually applies the initial first aid when Sangrid brings her to the manor. Which kind of makes a little bit of sense because, well, girl took an arrow to the shoulder. It's not a good idea. Why did you just jump out of my heel? It's not a good, exactly a good idea to be taking, an, you know, an arrow out on the run. You know, you're not supposed to do that, guys. You you, you get yourself med your ass medical attention first to, before you start yanking parts out of your body. Because you don't want to like bleed profusely or anything. So between that, even though it kind of makes sense that he, he might be the one to do that, or at least it wouldn't be done until the manor, um, yeah, he's a bit kind of freaking the fuck out, even though he doesn't really show it. And I think even though as much as I joke that, oh my god, somebody get a fucking medic, at the same time, no one else is standing around her but him and Tataru. And I think he, he's just so much in a panic that he's pretty much just told everyone, like, get the fuck out of the way. Like, he needs that space. And, and of course, Tataru... I really wish that they would kind of develop more of a friendship between him and Tataru as, as well. That's kind of one of my disappointments so far. But I but I am aware that there, there hasn't been sufficient time with which to actually do it. Like, he is sweet enough to, to make sure that she's informed that, you know, they're going on a mission, they're going to be gone for a while, you know, try not to worry too much kind of thing. So, so it's obvious there's something going on, you know, there that, that they've become a little bit friends. But I would, I would like a little bit, just, just a little bit more of, of, a, of a camaraderie between the two. But even so, I can't decide if, if because of that stupid little hen cannon, if he's letting her stay or because she is pretty much the heart and, and the snuggly one of the team that she's like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not having this. 
It's like, you can tell all those other guys to fuck off, but I'm staying put. But it's honestly, I don't think I've ever spotted this in the other languages for sure. I don't know absolutely for sure if it's Alize herself who requests the, the presence of the warrior of light. Considering, you know, when she, she spots us there, she's like, she's like, no, 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 don't go. I need to say something to you. Or if it's Alphano and Tataru because obviously he's falling apart the seams and he could definitely use the moral support there. Even as he's much as he's trying to hide it. Because that, that's, that's the one thing I do wish they would change about him. And I do understand why they don't. And mind you, this is not exactly a complaint as much as it is an observation. Even though he's much more open to emotion now than he was before. Because before, I mean, he was like, crap, he's a giant sassy pants. But... When he gets angry or upset, he, he, he very quickly calms himself down. Or at least, outwardly, pretty much calms himself right the hell down. And I, and I do want to see a bit more of a prolonged outburst from him. Now, I know that's kind of his sister's shtick. That, that she's, she's, she's far more the emotional one and far more able to express it. Like, she, she don't care. Like, she got something to say. You know, she'll, she'll say what it's ever on her mind consequences be damned and and he and he's more just like the, the, the common collected one but I kind of wish they they would at least at least for moments here and there they wouldn't have to flanderize it or anything just just have them just completely be inconsolable either out of anger or stress or, or or just generally over emotional or upset about something now it wouldn't have to be much just someone to say hey hey hold on do you need a hug calm down and then you know he can calm down or whatever but just something that for one moment he, he requires outside intervention to realize, okay, need to stay focused here, all this crap. Because surprisingly, even though obviously this situation does call for a bit of urgency, and I might be the page. Ah, God damn it! I hate when they do this shit. I think I'm in cleric stance and I'm not. But anyway, as I lose my focus there for a second. Even though, again, I think the urgency of the situation does call for him that, okay, he needs to snap back to attention sort of thing. At the same time, uh, I, he, they should have made him be freaking out a bit more. Like, you can tell in his voice that he, he is broken up and, and trying to hide it, but I, I, I kind of wish they did, they did a little more with that. I know the scene is not about him and him freaking out or anything like that, so, I, so I'm... I'm pretty much, I'm gonna forgive, like, I'm not really, again, I'm not really complaining so much as observing. But considering where, where they've taken his character so far, and now he's, he's almost a completely different person compared to the, the sassy pants he was, and of course the comments I've made that there are some situations where he has gotten just straight up dumb. Although I'm, I'm honestly not sure if it's him just doubting himself and his own intelligence as a result of what happens, or the writer's just kind of forgetting that, yeah, he's a fucking child genius for God's sake. He got the little stoats. Look at him, they're so cute! Yeah, I, I, now that I think about it, do the XL keep those as pets? Or are they more... Being farmed for some purpose as if you would farm cattle or chickens. I don't know. Somebody look that up for me. I am curious. Yeah, this is this is genuinely what goes on during my brain during all the time, you guys. I'll be like in the middle of telling a story and then I'll know there's something and I'll be like, you know what, I want to know more about that. Like right in the middle of it as if, as if nothing ever happened. All the damn time. This is my life, guys. Welcome to my hell. So I do wonder what a bunch of goobies are doing up here, but I also don't know if they live in the mountains or anything. I, I honestly don't know. But yeah, just look at the craftsmanship over here. I mean, look at this wood and... And, like, how... I mean, granted, it's not obviously perfect and everything, but just, just look at this fucking architecture. Like, this is just fucking brilliant, and it's made by bird people. Like, again, credit where credit is due. This is amazing what they built up here, up in, up in the inhospitable mountains, no less. That is one damn big staff. Let me tell you that. Holy shit. Now, obviously, someone is probably going to be thinking or pointing out, and yes, I am completely aware that the actual Ixel tribe that is the good ones who don't want to kick our asses are crafters. That, 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 that has not escaped my notice at all. 
But that still doesn't change the fact that, yeah, um, I'm, I'm totally orgasming over the architecture here. Yeah, they may be pissed off birds, but they sure know how to build crap. Especially because they can't fly. I mean, they had to, like, carry, like, make scaffolds and stuff and, like, carry all this crap up here. Uh, tanks, by the way, you can avoid the swift feather. Not easy, but it can be done. BT dubs. And that machine is gonna die. Wow, surprisingly. Thank you, Tetragrammaton. You just saved their butts, and I should probably shroud, because I'm not really paying attention. She's busy trying to talk, and... This the DPS is also new here. They're doing a decent job, but new people are new. Gotta make mistakes. All oh, that lowly smarm. But yeah, I can't get over how just giant that staff is. Like, holy shit, that thing is huge. That's like overcompensation city over here. Silly tank thought I was gonna let him die, or her, if the case may be. But I have to give credit where credit is due. At least one of them thought to hit the oh shit button. 90% of them don't even do that. Trusting your healer is important, but equally knowing that, yes, your healer may be lagging or otherwise not paying attention, and that you have the perfect presumption to not die is also equally as good. So another thing that's kind of cool about these dun this dungeon is that I, I don't know what you would call these things, but never-ending trash pools. I, I I guess is the one thing I can come up with for for the moment. Because if you do not defeat these war balloons, then the Ixil is just gonna keep coming and coming and coming and coming and coming. And I, I I actually like that about this place that you are actually punished for not paying attention or shitty DPS or anything. But yeah, let's just go back and forth and being like, ah, intruders! And just keep coming and coming and coming. So I like that, that even though it took them damn long enough to do so, that they're actually onto us and actively defending their home. And like, for once... Again, not that... This isn't kind of an urgent thing we need to take care of. Like, a primal's about to be summoned, alright? So... We need to take care of that problem. But at the same time... We did just absolutely just burst into the Ixel's home. I think they have a right to defend this. Like, it's not like any people live up here and they're terrorizing the local population, like, kicked out of the Twelves whether or not. This is their home. Yeah, I'm definitely fucking lagging. That rubber banding. It's over here. Our balloon's not gonna wait for you. It's just gonna show up. Come no further! Tank, tank. We're gonna get over here. You can't stop this. And here's where they actually start coming from both sides as well, which is not health, but... It is actually possible to get both war balloons down before... Either one of them can, can, can grab another stack of Ixel, but... So these airstone thingies are actually what the Ixley use to power their airships. And actually, half the technology we use to to for our own airships kinda stolen from the Ixel. Whoops. Ooh, 
like oh my god like what what material did they make these cables out of like how do they string them like across like these things this wide like holy shit like i know i keep expressing all of this but like i i i, I don't think this should go unnoticed guys Maybe if we be nice to the Ixal, we can actually like create like new homes in people with like various places, like places that you you think are are are, are too in, inhospitable to handle life. But like clearly they live here, not comfortably, mind you. But but they do live here, and they have made themselves a quaint little home, if if begrudgingly. Like, wouldn't it be so useful if we could if we could take what they know about? all this carpentry and, and stuff and kind of making primitive high rises over here to good use that would be awesome wouldn't it of course you know fat chance of that happening and whatnot but just just in a hypothetical sense like who cares about flying if you can build things to the sky anyway Okay, I'm, I'm guessing from your gear, you are either a priest or a priestess of some kind. I don't know what the genders of the of the bosses in this place are. I honestly did not look that up in the lore book before I, I, uh, I started this dungeon because it's not actually important to anything I'm saying. But, yeah, based on their name, it tells you, like, what under what directional wind they were born under. Like, their temperament and their gender or something like that. Some kind of bullcrap like that. So, so, so you can, by their name, like, tell, like, a, you know, when and where they were born and what gender they are. Kind of crap. So, by the name of this room, the Vortex, might give you some idea, guys. Just maybe. Gee, it's not like this is foreshadowing of any kind. I bet you it means absolutely nothing. It's just total coincidence, you guys. It's probably just really windy up here. Yes, yes, that is Garuda you just saw. As I totally, totally put Medica 2 on in Cleric Stance. Cat crawling all over me, you know the bullshit. Really hard to commentate when she's like crawling all over my lap, which is like right underneath the microphone and everything. Stop running away from that. Oh, you want to summon again? Well, apparently you didn't have enough crystals last time because it's not like she's sticking around for long. Hi, Garuda. Still mad it kicked your ass those couple times? Well, she seems to have a hard damn time trying to kill me, so... Yeah, I might have to disagree with your statement there. Not, not to be a little your god or goddess as the case may be, but... Yeah. Perhaps we have not met. By virtue of me never being here before, I am the warrior of light. Primal Slayer Extraordinaire. Guys, you need to stack on this. All four of us. All four. Not two. Thank you. Another day on the job for me, guys. It's just another day. Sucks not to have a keyboard because I would totally ask them to limit break right about meow. Right, which direction are you gonna go, girl? That way, okay. Nice butt. Thank you for the butt shot, you're right. I much preach.
You mad, bro? Sorry about that. Nothing good for me. Of course there wouldn't be. Of course, you guys. Ah, oh, of course the damn tank left. I was gonna give him my accommodation. Damn it. So, we, we stopped the summoning, I guess? Okay, can we go home now? Oh, hi, shorty pants. Thank the gods. What happened? No, it's just a normal day at work for me. It's fine. So they were unable to see the ritual to its completion. Then Garuda is no longer a threat, and whatever the Asians and the Warriors of Darkness were planning has come to naught. Okay, good news for everybody. But we should not tarry. The Knights have secured our path to safety. Well, well. What do we have here? You'd better not have killed the primal without us. Oh, sorry. Oh, did I beat you to it? Oh, I guess we're one and one now, bitches. Now who's too slow? You! Wait, I know you. Still walking, I see. I could have sworn my aim was true. Just what is your game? Leading us a long way so these fools could step in and claim our prize? Uh, we had help. Now, now. Let's not make hasty accusations. By the look of things, the ritual was proceeding as planned. We arrived at the appointed hour. It was they who erred. You didn't see the Ixla corpses on the way up here? It is hopeless. We cannot face them all. No, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. They caught us off guard last time. We're totally got this this time. Do mine ears deceive? A boy! So that's the way of it. Twins! You had me worried for a moment there. Know that I will happily make it quicker for you. If you just stand still. Bitch, fuck you. Enough, Jarumal. We wouldn't want to upset the man in white with any unnecessary bloodshed now, would we? So, so who's this other one of you? You've been group? awfully busy since we were kind enough to spare your lives. You mean kind enough to spare your lives? You're the one who picked the fight with us. I could have just scarpled off if that's what you wanted. While you were idly consorting with the Asians, you mean? Seven hells! What could you possibly hope to achieve? Should I explain it to you? Very well. Consider it a reward of sorts for beating us here. You know the tale of Hydaelyn and Zodiac, I take it? Of the Great Sundering, and the reflections it created? Wow, he's actually going to tell us, and that wasn't a, a smug line to ever attempt to kick our asses again. Wow. Okay, evil Dark Lander. Alright. Alright, what do you got for me? Keep going. Keep going. Let's milk him for all he's got. Across ten and three they were divided. Reflections of the Source, each possessed of shards of light and dark. Just so. One of those reflections, the one nearest to the source, is our home. And we were the heroes blessed with her light. Go on. But not all worlds hold light and dark in equal measure. In ours, the power of light was greater by far. So the Asians who once threatened our home were no match. And they fell before us. 
one after another till none were left. Victory, we thought. And then came the light. A flood of pure, blinding radiance, annihilating shadow and color and life itself. Ere long it will consume our world, leaving naught in its wake but blank perfection. Okay. How does that explain what you're fucking up shit over here for? That... that cannot be. Do you honestly expect us to believe such a story? Believe what you like. But it has happened before. On a world far removed from ours. The 13th. Which was swallowed by the dark and transformed into what you call the void. So what do you guys call it then? Unchallenged light would condemn us to a similar fate. And so we joined hands with our former enemies. And with their aid came here. To the source. For there is but one way to restore the balance and save our home. The Arda. Calamitous destruction with the power to break down the barriers between planes and see our worlds rejoined. You would doom our world to save your own? What would even become of us? Of you? Enough. I tire of talking. You know our cause. You know what is at stake. We are prepared to do whatever it takes. Are you? Hi. Who are you? If there is aught you would say, say it. Otherwise, be gone. You have no friends here. Okay then. Hello to you too. Alrighty then. Uh. So basically what's happening here, because I completely neglected it at the end of Anti-Tower, because it was just going to be more make more sense to explain it here. For those who are unaware of what's already going on, who hasn't played this game before, basically what happens is long ago, Hydaelyn, Zordiark, Zordiark March Power, Hydaelyn's like, I'm not having any of this shit, so she banishes him. And in result of that, pretty much the world splits into 14 copies, so to speak. The source, which is where we are, and 13 reflections. Think of them as kind of just parallel worlds, I, I guess. And they come actually come from it's it's literally explicitly stated the first, and basically what the Asians' goal is is basically they cause they cause these calamities to cause basically so much damage to Hydaelyn that she has to absorb one of these shards or other worlds in order to maintain her strength, keep her alive, all that stuff. So those are their their rejoinings that the the Asians speak of. However. You cannot bring the the inspection of Aether in one of the shards towards all the one all the way one way or all the way the other. What happened to the thirteenth as they describe, which is now the void, it's a world devoid of Aether. That's kinda why they call it the void. And the reason the void sent come over to this world is to literally well, they they have to eat. They gotta eat Aether and shit. But uh it stated in the lore book that Ikeorum was actually the one in charge of the thirteenth. And because it's now completely devoid of Aether, well, it's also useless to the Athians and Zordiark. That's why she goes and teams up with La Habrea to do all the ass kicking she did before to kind of make up for her punishments. Now, where the, the, the evil Derplander and his crew hail from is the first, not that that's of any consequence, really. But they have the opposite problem. They are way too far respected in, in toward the light side. But that's just as bad because pretty much the same damn thing is going to happen. And basically what their ultimate plan is 
is to cause yet another calamity to cause Hydaelyn to suck in their world, and thus there's a chance that obviously not everyone, you know, it's not it's not gonna tell or turn into another lifeless husk that is the void. So yeah. They didn't even do anything to us. We could have taken them. They caught us by surprise last time. Come on. Come on. You and I together tore the eyes of Nidhogg off of Stanian. All right? We can handle anything. Oh, I already know about the damn Orchestrion. Stop yelling at me about that game. Oh, my goodness. So yeah, that's going to be it for this episode. We've already gone on long enough, but I don't know about you, but I've had enough of evil Darklander and his cronies. You know, Alfie tried to make fucking friends with them beforehand, but no, it wasn't happening. Any they weren't having any of that. I'm not going to stay to here because, again, I've gone on too long, but I do have a little blurb in, in the description of... I'm not sure if this is a genuine mistake or just them being a bunch of idiots, but there's a little bit of an inconsistency I found that is of not of any consequence in the narrative, but just something that bugs me in general. Um, just in case you ask anyone actually gives a shit about things like that. But thank you for watching, friends, and I shall see you next time.